Hey there and welcome to my latest landscape and wilderness photography blog here in, wait for it, Canada. Today is day one of my Canadian photography trip. It's a two week trip and I'm going to show you guys a couple of different national parks up in the Rocky Mountains and a couple of really cool rivers and canyons and other wild Canadian experiences. Today I am starting my mission in the big RV. I'm going to live life on the road as a tourist. Being an outsider to Canada without that real local knowledge, it's not an ambition to try and capture those images that that true local knowledge needs. So I'm going to show you a photographer's perspective as a tourist here in Canada. Let's go check it out. I have just arrived to my first location here off highway number five and I made a little reserve called Othello Tunnels which is quite spectacular. I have positioned myself right on the elbow of this river. I am going to take an image from this elevated spot. The light in the background is very harsh, there's a lot of haze. It's actually a contrast to yesterday's weather off the report which was copious amounts of rain so in a way I'm glad there is no rain but I also get a lot of mountain haze with that late afternoon sun. I have taken one image just at the moment and this image is shot at a fourth of a second at f16 and I've used a 35mm lens and a circular polarizer to cut some of that glare across the water and to reduce some of that haze in the background. What I do like at the moment to enhance this picture, it's a separation between those trees in the background and the mountain with some lovely late afternoon catch light. It really is hard to get perspective of this place. It is actually quite mind blowing how deep these canyons actually are. There's almost a feeling of vertigo as I'm surrounded by these tremendous stone walls. This brings me to my next location and I'm going to spend a bit of time in and around this location as I feel that the Othello tunnels really are magnified by their power at this section of the canyon. It got the better of me. I have made my way right down to the bottom of this canyon and this view is absolutely spectacular. I've got myself right down in front of this rapid section which offers an amazing lead in, in through and out to these canyon walls. 
I have framed it so the top of these big pine trees have got some beautiful light coming in over the back. And I'll just give you a look at what I'm looking at. And crawling right down in here really has been worth the effort. I have shot this on the 35mm prime lens and I have taken this image at f16 at four seconds long to get some beautiful contrast on this river with the rapids coming towards me. I am going to move. I'm just going to explore the other side of this walkway, which I came in on, and have a look at shooting down the canyon to see if I can get some more interesting results. So let's go and have a look. As it turns out, coming down the other this side of this canyon hasn't really paid off. It is a fantastic spot to come down and have a look, but for photography, I feel that I have missed out on a good opportunity. Not because of the location, but I have probably limited myself marginally, only bringing a 35mm prime lens down to this particular spot and I think it needed something more like a, a 24 or possibly an 18mm wide angle lens. Not to worry, plenty of time left and that concludes the first day of being a tourist in Canada. Hey there and welcome to the Wells Grey Provincial Park and I'm at Spa Hat Falls which is a tremendous waterfall. It's like a big canyon falling down into a lower canyon here. I'm up nice and high and this is one place that I don't feel the need to jump the handrail and get a better composition, not like some other places. I have had a bit of fun setting up my tripod. I've only got my really little travel tripod with me and it's just a little bit um, interesting to get into position in some spots but I've managed to secure it to the guardrail here. I have got the 35mm lens on and I've got a circular polarizer on as well just to cut some glare. I've had to wait here maybe 10 minutes, there's been a bit of overhead sun and it's really caused too much contrast or shadow against the left hand side of the cliff here versus the right hand side which is in complete shadow. So I have had wait for that cloud to cover. I've taken one exposure here and I'll show you. It is at half a second at F16 and that is well and truly enough stop down shutter to make this a nice milky stream coming out through this tremendous canyon. Just finished photographing the waterfall and I'm exercising great restraint here. I can see just over the side of the bluff down there, there's an amazing looking section of river. And like I said before, I'm gonna play the tourist card and just stick to all the major tourist trails so I don't get myself into too much trouble. One other little thing that has been concerning me a little bit is everyone seems to be carrying bear spray with them and I'm not, so. I'm just wondering if it's just a fashionable accessory or I should be carrying some myself. So I might have a bit of a think about that. But for now, back to the big RV and a further explore in this provincial park.
Welcome to a wet Canadian morning. It is day three and I'm at Helmchen Falls. That's how I think it's pronounced. I'm the tourist, so don't expect it to be too accurate at this stage. It's a very misty morning and this waterfall looks absolutely incredible behind me. I have had to set myself up under the umbrella just to keep some of the water off the camera, which um, is unavoidable today. I have got the 35 mil prime lens on. I have got a neutral density filter on just to add a little bit more time to my shutter, just to slow the action down a little bit more. I have got the camera set on f16 and my exposures are between one and two seconds just depending on that fog and where it is at that stage. I have already got myself a few pictures. I took a few before I started setting up for the blog and I think it was a smart idea just to set up outside of the rain and also just to grab a few exposures in case that fog really does white out as it is at the moment. But I will hang out here a little bit longer, grab a few more images like right now. And what I actually waited for was that fog to lift up high enough just to cover the tree line just a little bit. The sky is not that dramatic behind the waterfall at the moment, so adding a little bit of a, a foggy coat has certainly helped out a little bit here as well. I'm gonna hang out here a little bit longer and then I'm gonna journey on back up the highway north and see what other amazing Canadian photography spots are along the way. Stay tuned.